My name is Heather McTaggart. I'm the uh, Executive Director of Classroom Connections. Um, I founded the organization 23 years ago with the idea that education system needed to change. And we've been through a number of ways trying to do that. First, producing resources that were free for schools right across the country, and many of which went to um, countries outside of Canada. Um, I think our most significant program was something called Cultivating Peace. And it was uh, out in schools for the first anniversary of the 9-11 the attacks and won awards and was shipped to over 50 countries, but still didn't change the education system. So then we spent uh, 10 years working with First Nations communities um, in uh, Western Canada, in Alberta, to prove that alternate methods of education could work. And this is with um, you know, almost entirely dropouts, um, teens and, and young adults. And while we changed lives, we didn't change any systems. And then we were looking at uh, starting a self-directed school in Toronto to show that this works, uh, like the 500 others that are out there in the world and show that it works. Um, and then COVID happened and we realized we need to take a different tact. Today is the International Freedom in Education Day. What does freedom in education mean for you? One thing, choice. It means that kids should get to choose what it is they learn, how they learn it, and who they learn it with. How do you think could we achieve this freedom for everybody out there? Well, our, our, the, the project that we're working on now, which is, is really to try to create a movement called Unschooling School, unschoolingschool.com, um, that recognizes that the majority of kids are in publicly funded education. And while it's wonderful to, to create alternative schools and to do unschooling at home, that's not gonna reach everybody. So the idea of unschooling school is that parents and students unite and demand that the education system adjusts for them. So right now the system is a certain model and everybody's supposed to contort themselves to fit into that model. And what unschooling school is saying is no, wrong way around. The education system needs to adjust for the individual and be there to serve the individual child. You are from Canada. How much freedom in education can we already find there today? What, what's there is, is about 2% of families doing, um, or of kids of school age doing homeschooling. And we figure that about half of that is unschooling. It's not a huge problem to decide to unschool or homeschool your kids in Canada. Um, there's a little bit of paperwork, but that's really it. Nobody comes to arrest you if you are um, choosing to educate your kids at home. Um, even you can be attending school and miss a lot of days and go and do other things or take a year off and it's not really a problem. Uh, we have quite a few alternative schools within the education system. None of them are anywhere near as free as, well, let me, with the exception of maybe a handful, maybe five, um, are fairly well down the, the freedom track in terms of uh, children's uh, choice. But the rest of them are just different flavors of the same system. So we don't have as many um, Sudbury Valley models or agile learning centers as the US, for example. Um, however, I would say that individual choice within school right now in Canada is probably further, further towards freedom than it, than it would be in the US, for example. What would have to change that people could take that choice more easily? Hmm. I, I think it's re recognizing that they have power. We've, we've somehow created a situation where individuals, so, so students and parents, don't think they have any power. They think, oh, the system has told me I have to do this. We have to do homework or we're going to get in trouble. You know, we have to take tests or we're going to get in trouble. And what we're trying to say is, no, just stand up and say no. Simply, I refuse this. I opt out. I'm going to stay in the public system because we're already paying for it and it's here and it's got all kinds of resources, but I'm going to say no to certain things. And I, it, to me, it's a little bit like recycling. Once you know that you can recycle a can and it's not going to go in landfill, you're walking down the street and you have a, a can of soda in your hand and it's empty and you want to throw it away. If you can't find a recycling bin, it's really hard to just throw that can away in a garbage because you now know that there's something better to do. And I'm thinking, I'm hoping that that's what it's like. Once people hear, okay, I can just say no to certain things at school. Wow, 
that is my right. Why shouldn't it be my right? I'm going to start doing that. How does your website, unschoolingschool.com, help people to realize that choice? So the, so the unschoolingschool.com website is, is it started off little with just an idea and, a, and a, a little animated video that said, what if we did this? You know, what if? And it's grown and grown because there, are, there is so much research out there that says that self-directed education is absolutely the answer and that children should be able to de de um, declare themselves a free learner. This is the, the term that we're using is, you know, kids should be able to say, I'm a free learner. I, I'm going to get to choose to learn the things that I want to learn. And we've created um, a number of forms and tools and mechanisms to formalize, you know, now I'm a free learner, I've completed the form, I've completed my free learner self-directed education plan. And these are the, the tools and the resources of the schools that I'd like, school that I'd like to be able to use. And this is my declaration that I will be a responsible free learner. So when you go to the website and you decide to do this, you can create a whole package for yourself to share with the school, the principal or the, or the teacher and say, here it is. And it looks very formal. And we're, we're purposely taking some of the tools that are already in the system and repurposing them for, <laughs> for freedom so that uh, teachers or principals will look at this and say, huh, this looks actually kind of real. Um, and that is the idea that it will be easier for them to accept because it does look formal and there is a process. I think though that the other thing that is critical in this is that people educate themselves. If you're going to decide you're a free learner and that you want to choose what you want to do at school, you need to spend a lot of time on the website and link to other websites and other sources and read, for example, at a minimum, you know, Peter Gray's book and Carl, Carl Rust's book, you know, um, get out of the way and get, get let kids learn and and Derry Hannum's and another way is possible and, and Wayne Jennings transforming education I mean there are so many wonderful books out there and in you know, many of which we list on our, our site as well as the many other sites that are out there that are talking about self-directed education so if you're going to do this it's still work it's just that it's now work that you're interested in as opposed to work that somebody else is telling you what to do. Today, the standard in education is coercive education. How did we get to the point where we have to ask for freedom in education, or even better, demand freedom in education? I think it's, it's a coming together of so many things that, you know, schools like Summerhill have been around now for 100 years. They're about to celebrate their 100 year anniversary and Sudbury Valley is at 50 years. And those things have spread. And we've got, you know, so sort of, I think the estimation is between four and 500 in the world. And so the, the group that is involved in this is getting larger and larger. And at the same time, I think that the, the education systems in, in you know, all of the developed countries have become, well, they've done a funny thing. They've done both, they, they talk about student directed and choice and children are the center of all we do. They have these good lines that they say, but The reality is there's more structure, there's more testing, there's more time in school, there's more schoolifying of extracurricular and outside school activities. So the actual amount of freedom that kids have has, since the 50s, for example, has sharply declined at the same time as anxiety, suicide, depression, and anxiousness have, have gone up with kids. And, you know, with if you look at the work of Peter Gray, this is clear that these are related. So I guess what I think is happening is that We're hopefully at a tipping point where enough people, enough adults have a child in the system that they can plainly see this is not working. You know, I had this bright, fun, happy child and every year that goes by at school, they become more and more miserable. You know, or I have a child who, who loves school and is excelling, but is bored because there's not enough going on. And, you know, they used to think it was so exciting and now it's, oh, the class is still doing this and we've already done it before. So they, they, the, the, percentage of people that are kind of served by the system, I think is at maximum 20%. And even then, if they were allowed to control their own education, they could probably go so much further. So I, I guess it's, it's an awakening like other things, you know, it's like Black Lives Matter, it's like uh, Me Too, it's people saying, you know what, that's enough, that's enough. 
we don't need we don't need things to be this way. It doesn't matter that you know the most of the world has accepted it. It's time it's time to stop accepting it.